Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is a follow-up video on this 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery that I put together in a previous video. In that video when I made this 12 volt battery, I also tested the capacity for the cells. If you have not seen that video, a link has been posted at the end of this video. Since I made that video, I cycled these cells at least a dozen times deep cycling, so I took them down about 80% of the capacity, charged them back up, and I didn't observe any drop in capacity using a 100 amp load for the 12 cycles. It was roughly the same length of time that it was being used on the first cycle and the last cycle. But I cannot say how these are going to act over a long period of time if you cycle these every single day deeply for six months to a year. That's yet to be determined. But as of now, the cells are still very good. The battery management system you see right here works perfectly. I haven't had any issue with it. It keeps the cells all very close in voltage. I think it's within 0.015 volts or 0.02 volts apart on all the cells. I also charge the battery using 50 amps. That's what it's rated for, up to 50 amps charging current and no problem at all. It just remains slightly warm. Exceeding the 100 amp constant current rating, also no problem. I could do 150 amps easy for four to five minutes and it just starts to get a little bit warm. So the BMS does work well. If you're interested in a BMS, this one is definitely the way to go. Now one thing that I want to show you that's definitely no good. This 200 amp breaker that you're looking at. There's actually two problems with it. The first one is that it trips way below the rating. So in this case it says 200 amps and I'm going to demonstrate in a minute so you'll see. This actually will trip as low as 60 or 70 amps. It's horrible. What happens, the post begins to heat up. So internally something is going on, heating up the post, and as a result that bimetallic disc inside is triggered, opening the circuit. Definitely not a breaker that you'd want to use for solar energy, auto, or even marine purposes because it does not trigger reliably. There's also a problem once it triggers, Normally you could just go like this. It didn't click. See that? It has a problem. Sometimes it clicks. Sometimes you actually have to pull the top this way as you push the lever that way and it makes a very easy watch. See that? Every time it works that way. If you go like this. And if you just do this, you see? It's a problem. You gotta keep playing with it. So that's a bad design because there's too much play in this lever and I noticed it on the 300 amp one that I have as well. I also made sure the heating problem was not the result of a high resistance or poor connection between the post and the plate and the post and the lug connector for that number four wire. I'm going to connect up a power inverter off to the side and I'm going to do two tests. I'm going to do a 150 amp test first and while I'm performing the test I'm going to have my thermal camera looking at the breaker and once that test is done we're going to repeat it much lower around 68 amps. Let's get started. With this meter clamped over the wire you'll be able to see at what point the breaker trips. The measurement will be right over here. And you can see it didn't do it again. Now I'm going to turn on the inverter And you can see the standby current fluctuating. It looks like 600 to 900 milliamps. Now I'm going to turn on the hair dryer. Oh, look at that, guys. What was that, like 10 seconds and it tripped? And right here is an overlay from my thermal camera so you can see exactly where the heating was taking place. I'm now going to repeat the test. We're going to go lower than 150. Keep an eye on the current.
And there you have it. At 68 amps, this opened. And I could touch this. It's very warm. This side here, I mean, it's, it's not hot. I mean, when you look at it on the infrared camera, it appears to be very hot, but it's just very warm. What I thought was happening was the post, because of a poor connection with the cable, was becoming very hot, and the heat was traveling backwards into the breaker, causing that bimetallic disc inside of it to trigger, and that's not the case. It's actually coming from the breaker. Let me show you one thing. Let me remove this nut right here. Take this off. If you look right over here, I added this brass or bronze washer. Let me take that off and I'll show you why. Slide that off. If you take a look right over here, you're going to notice this flat area of the connector cannot lay flat against this piece right here. And the reason is this brass section that's flat is beneath this black plastic area. It's slightly higher here and a little bit lower here. So when this goes on, when you tighten it, you have a little space or you're going to maybe damage the plastic if you really torque the nut. So what I did to ensure that very good contact is made between this connector and there is I took this brass washer, which is very thick, slid it over, and now you can see it'll go against that other piece of brass very good. It'll be higher than the black plastic, and then this would go over, and you can really crank that down. It did not help, as you just saw in the previous tests. Now, just to show you, because some people might say, oh, this cable's too small, let me connect up a much heavier cable right here. And then we're going to repeat the test, and you're going to see the same problem happens. Over here, you can see the heavier cable connected up to this side of the breaker. And here's the other cable just dangling out of the way on the bottom. Let me repeat the test at 68 amps. There you go, 68 amps with a heavier wire with a great connection and a great connection here and it tripped all over again. Total garbage. Let me open this up so we can take a look at the inside. Taking these rivets out was not too easy. These heated up and spun around so I went to the opposite side and I did the same thing and finally got it open. You have to remove the lever first and slide this up. This pushes down on this bar that resets the disc. You can see the bimetallic disc is right here. The current is flowing through that disc. So what I want to do is I want to see the connection between these posts and the disc because there's heating going on and a lot between here and there. And what I see over here I don't like, it looks like a bolt was just shoved through a washer so you have maybe a high resistance connection between the threads and this area here. Let me pop the stuff out of here. Spring right here. Camera's my way. This is not going back together, so I don't care. Pull it around. There we go. Now I want to take this off because I want to see the connection between here and there, here and there. All right, let's lift this up and see what's going on underneath. Caught on that bolt. There we go. Hmm. This contact area makes contact right on there. And here you can see the convex side of that bimetallic plate. And this side here is concave. And that's the contact point. All the current flows 
through this plate. It heats up, causing it to flex in the opposite direction and open the circuit. There's not too much metal in this area between here and there. And it's very thin, so I don't know where they're hiding it. I should probably cut this open so we can look. But over here, it's just bolted. There's no connection point. It's washer. And there's a little bit of a brass area right in there. Yep. So let me cut this open more. Let me just break it and smash it with a hammer so we can take a close look. And after taking a hammer to the plastic, which appeared to be Bakelite the way it snapped, I was able to get down to each section. So here you can see this is about 9 millimeters wide and only about 2 millimeters thick, and that's the same for both. Over here we have a silver connection. It may be just silver plated, but it's definitely silver right there. This end right here is a bolt and it was pressed in. You can see on this end there's like little ribbed areas. They drilled the hole and they pressed it in. So we're getting heating definitely either in here between the connection between the bolt and there or just because this is not thick enough. It's not thick enough it maybe should be a little bit wider. To have 200 amps going through here and it's not copper it's brass so the conductivity is not going to be as good so you'd want to make this even thicker. So that's definitely an issue. And if you take a very powerful neodymium magnet, this is a one inch diameter, it does absolutely nothing. So I know that there's no steel in here with the exception of right over here, that little bolt, which I don't like. It should have been brass because you want the conductivity as good as possible. And this is not going to help. This was the point that it attached to the disc. Let me see if I could take out one of the bolts to see how it's connected to the plate. Right here with the bolt removed, you can see that it has a smooth area that goes into that smooth opening of the plate. You have that knurled top edge that sets into the plastic and there's a little bit of a lip so it is being able to seat tightly on this side when you tighten it on the opposite side using a nut. I don't think the problem of heating is going to be coming from this spot. I think it's just going to be the fact that the plate really isn't thick enough or wide enough and they're also using steel right here too to connect to that bimetallic plate and they also have a steel nut making contact against that disc. I also don't know how good this is right over here the contact point if it's only touching in one little spot you're having a hundred amps or two hundred amps going between there and you're only using like a one millimeter spot. So that's going to generate heat and that heat's going to transfer into this plate making it pop in the opposite direction much faster than it normally would. So my recommendation would be avoid these at all cost. Spend more money if you really want a circuit breaker. The ones that I know work extremely well are the ones you see over here made by Busman or Blue Sea. Friends of mine had them in boats, RVs, never any problem with them. The only issue is they are a little expensive. And if you don't want to spend that much money on a breaker, then I suggest you use one of the things you see right here, a fuse holder with an ANL or mega fuse. Very inexpensive, and if you size the fuse properly, you should not blow the fuse. And guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my wide range of videos for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.